Welcome to Night Hacking at the Java Land Conference. My name's Steven Chen. I'm the Java Community Manager, and I'm joined by Erbhard Wolf. How are you doing? Very good, thanks. So we're gonna we're gonna chat a little bit about microservice architectures, um, and I know that you've been you've been involved in microservice architectures for a while. But how did you how did you get involved in this style of building applications? Um, that's a very good question. So um, a few years back, I had a consulting engagement where we were looking at a very good, big monolithic application, and we were trying to figure out how to modernize it. And naturally, we ended up with um, with implementing new parts that would use um, very little of the old system and were completely separated. And I guess that was the very first engagement where uh, I was thinking about an architecture that you would call, nowadays call microservices. And in uh, 2013, I joined a project that was doing a lot with continuous delivery and already mm -hmm. was implementing such a microservices architecture from the bottom up. And that is where I really got started in it. And now I'm doing uh, a lot of consulting in, uh, with different clients about microservices. I do trainings and things like that. So it ha actually has been an interesting subject for me for quite a long time. Yeah, okay, so you're really on the, the bleeding edge of, of doing this style of application before microservices was a, a trendy term. <laughs> yeah, um, that's true. So I think, I mean, um, I was involved with continuous delivery first, and if you want to uh, support continuous delivery from an architecture standpoint, yeah. you naturally end up with smaller deployment units. Um, and I think it's also interesting to note that Amazon has been doing it since 2006, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, because they were talking about small deployment units running on their then new Amazon cloud infrastructure and so on. Yeah. And I think, again, that is something that um, resonates quite well with the microservices idea as we have it today. Do you think there's a strong correlation between like cloud deployments and different deployment architectures and the move towards microservices? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, I mean, the point is if you have uh, microservices, you're going to have a lot more deployable units and you yeah. cannot possibly run such a system or operate it if you don't have an environment that supports that. And I think that is where uh, cloud comes in and you need to have some kind of automated infrastructure that allows you to have a lot of uh, systems deployed. Cool. So I, I know you recently, your book was released, your microservice yeah. book. Um, so this is a good resource for folks to learn about microservices. But how was the, before we actually get into the book, how was the book writing process? I'm a, I'm a fellow author, so it's interesting to, to hear about your experience. Yeah. So basically what I did is in the second quarter of last year, um, I did almost no consulting engagements anymore and just wrote the book. Before that, I had a, a concept um, of um, you know, how the, the book would be um, split apart into the chapters and what I really wanted to say. And then I wrote it um, basically full time in, in that second quarter. And then there was a lot, uh, some more work like uh, you know, doing all the fixes and copy editing yeah, and things yeah. like that. Um, and then uh, I did the translation uh, into English. So the book was originally uh, written in German. Did you translate it yourself? Uh, actually, my wife did almost all of the work. <laughs> so uh, that's she a, is... That's a very dedicated wife. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and quite honestly, it wouldn't have been possible otherwise because uh, if you have a professional translator, that's just too expensive to do it. Yeah, yeah, I see. But, and probably your wife is technical enough that she actually can do a good job with well, actually, she, uh, she spent a year in the States, and uh, she's working in science. Uh, yeah. So she's uh, publishing a lot of uh, English papers. So that is why, why we did it. So she is not really technical at all. OK, but you are. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. And she's scientifically I'm, technical. Yeah, in a way she is. But <laughs> she is, uh, so she is working in, in life science. OK, so I, I popped your book up on the screen. Um, so in addition to this, you also mentioned that you have like a um, a free PDF resource? Yeah. So um, that's the primer, and um, that's a, a short book. And the reason why I wrote the book was, um, well, because my publisher made me, and also, <laughs> also because I really wanted to talk about why you would do microservices and what they are. So yeah. I think that's like, uh, the, the, those are the most obvious questions that you ask when you start with microservices. So I really wanted to 
uh, give an introduction that talks about the reasons for doing it and uh, you know what what they are uh, and then give give some hints about uh, how you can progress okay. and that's uh, that's free and you can also get a paperback uh, a paperback version you can um, audit in amazon uh, but that is uh, costs a few dollars or euros or whatever okay and if folks wanted to get started with a a microservice application. Are there any good resources for like examples or? I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> um, so for the, um, actually when, when I wrote the book, um, it was, there was not really such an example. So what I uh, did is uh, I came up with one myself and mm -hmm. uh, I ended up doing an example that you can download at GitHub and there is some documentation there. Uh, where you can, um, that tells you how to install the example, how to compile it, and how to run it. Um, and it uses uh, Docker as a foundation. So yeah, it yeah. uses Docker Machine to install a Docker environment and Docker Compose to compose all the different Docker containers together. Then uh, it uses a few Spring Boot applications. Uh, so Spring Boot is uh, a microservice environment based on, on Spring that allows you to do fat jar deployment and uh, makes it quite easy to create REST applications. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I'm using there. And then Spring Cloud. Uh, Spring Cloud is quite a large project, so there is a lot of stuff in there. And I would say that the name is actually somewhat misleading. I would rather call it Spring Microservices. Uh, uh, yeah. So it has a lot of different things in there to run uh, microservices and I use the Netflix part of it. So Netflix has a lot of open source tools uh, for microservices and uh, I'm using Zool for routing to route incoming requests to the right microservice. Mm -hmm. Ribbon for client, uh, client side load balancing to load balance uh, requests to microservices to the different uh, instances. Eureka for service discovery if you have a lot of microservices you want to uh, you want to have some service discovery to make them talk to one another. Yeah. And finally, Hustrix for resilience. And okay, so this is quite a complete example. This is not a, a beginner example. Yeah, I mean, what it does, it, it's actually very easy. It's just an application to do, order, to do an order process. So it's very trivial in that regard. And you wouldn't normally implement that as microservices. But as you said, it's a very complete example. And uh, what I tried to accomplish is that it's very easy to actually start it, to actually make it work. Yeah. So uh, you need to install the infrastructure, uh, the Docker toolbox, uh, VirtualBox, you need to have uh, a Java build system, and then it's just a few commands that you enter to have something up and running. And I think that's, uh, well, that was just what I thought was missing uh, when, when I started writing the book. And I think it's very valuable uh, to, to work with that. Okay, that's very cool. Um, so microservices, like, like we mentioned, this is kind of the buzzword now, and everybody is trying to or do them or talk about them. But what, what other sort of stuff are you interested or looking into for the future? Oh, um, so one thing that um, we figured out at, at the company that I work with is um, a style that is based on microservices called self-contained systems. Mm -hmm. So if you look at microservices, there are actually quite a lot of reasons why you would want to do them. And one of the reasons might be, you know, you can independently scale each of those microservices. And the reason why I think microservices are interesting is because it allows you to break a large project apart and have teams work on each of those small systems. So to me, it's, uh, it's, it's a very good architecture to scale your project, to scale you know, the, the number of people that can work on the project. Yeah. And um, the company that I work for, InnoQ, came up with an idea called self-contained systems that really tries to emphasize on that. So the idea is to break apart a deployment monolith so something that you need to deploy, where you need to deploy everything uh, together into self-contained systems that would each be basically an independent web application. So the difference to uh, microservices is that uh, microservices, you basically, uh, it's, it's like a service that would talk REST to another service. And what we are saying is maybe it's a better idea to have uh, a piece that actually renders HTML 
and then do an integration on the HTML layer. So if you have, you know, if you have an order, and uh, you might want to have a link to the customer, or you want to get some HTML code that oh, actually okay. renders that's, the customer into the order. That's interesting. So rather than just having one front end pulling from other um, microservices, you might actually have multiple front end microservices, and you're communicating and passing off load between them as you navigate. Yes, uh, actually, the the self-contained system would just not just be the, the front end, but everything, like the yeah. database, the logic, and everything. And um, the reason why we emphasize that idea is also, first of all, because the coupling is much more loose, because uh -huh. all you rely on is that those self-contained systems somehow render HTML, which yeah. everything every system basically should do, and. Um, also, if you, have, if you have a new feature, it will probably be implemented in more self-contained systems. So it also puts an emphasis on uh, the teams working independently. So I think that's, that's yeah, uh, also okay. quite Yeah, OK. So there's less dependencies. And it looks like, like in that picture, you have vertical bars. So if you, if you thought about microservices, there'd be a lot more horizontal cutting lines in a microservice architecture. Exactly. And that is why, so if, that is actually one of the things that um, that I'm sort of, that I think is interesting to note that if you say microservices, there are actually quite a lot of different styles. Um, as you say, you might end up with a more layered approach, and uh, or you might have a more vertical approach. And uh, I think it's, I mean, the layered approach. I think it does work. If you look at Netflix, I think that's a very successful example uh, of a layered approach. But uh, we we do have an alternative, and we are uh, well trying to, or we, we see a lot of successful projects using that approach with our clients. OK, that's very cool. Um, so this, is, this has been a great interview. So we learned about microservices, got some good templates and examples. People can get started with your free PDF book as well as the book you've written. Um, the self-contained services work looks very interesting as well. So I hope that actually turns into something which future people building microservice style architectures will look to as a different way of structuring their applications. Yeah. Um, so thank you very much for the short interview here at the Java Land Conference. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Um, for folks here and also on the live stream, we have several more interviews lined up. We have a VJUG session with Andre Amore coming up very shortly. Um, we're going to do some people on the early adopter stage who are going to come out and chat. And we also have an interview with um, Now and Pepper this afternoon. So join us for more live interviews at nighthacking.com.